Let's take a look at some properties of absolute value. First one, absolute value of something is always greater than or equal to zero. Examples. Absolute value of 2 is just 2 because 2 is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, absolute value of 0 is 0 because 0 is greater than or equal to 0, specifically by this part of it, the equal to part, right? Okay, absolute value of negative 3 is equal to positive 3 because 3 is greater than or equal to 0. If you have an expression, absolute value of like 2 minus 3, then you have to work on the expression with an absolute value bars first. So it's going to give you the absolute value of negative 1, which is just positive 1 then. In each case, notice the output is always greater than or equal to 0. You're doing very well so far, friends. Please be sure to subscribe, like, and share, and watch all the way to the end. Another property. When you have the absolute value of a product, then you can just distribute the absolute value to each factor independently. Let's do this in practice. Imagine we have the absolute value of 2 times 3. This states you can do the following. The absolute value of 2 times the absolute value of 3. You can take the absolute values independently. So then notice how this is now absolute value of 2 times absolute value of 3. Make sure you see the difference clearly. So then we will have the following. 2 times 3, then you can apply the absolute value, and then which is just 6. And now in this case it's true, you could just do 2 times 3, which is 6, and then absolute value of 6 is 6. But this illustrates the rule with a simple example. Let's do another one. Negative 2 times x. What does this rule state? You can distribute the absolute value. You're going to have the absolute value of negative 2 times the absolute value of x. The negative 2 get, gets its own set of bars, and x gets its own set of bars, and you multiply between the bars now. That's going to give you 2 times the absolute value of x. You can take the absolute value of negative 2 to get positive 2. The absolute value of x you have to leave y, because we don't know whether x is positive or negative or 0 or what have you, see? So like if x is 5, this would be just 2 times 5, but if x were negative 5, you would have to take the absolute value first and then multiply by 2 to still get 10. Another rule is you can distribute the absolute value bars to each piece independently when you're dividing, you see? So absolute value of A over B is the quotient of the individual absolute values. Let's apply. So you're going to have negative 4 over 3 in absolute value as one fraction. This states you can do the negative 4 in absolute value in the numerator, divide by the absolute value of 3 in the denominator, which is then just absolute value bars get applied, it becomes 4 over positive 3. This way, that's what the rule states. Another example, negative x over 3. So you apply the rule. You'll have the absolute value of negative x separate, so division bar, and then absolute value of positive 3. Now we wouldn't stop here because you see, we've learned previously that the negative x, this is like a negative 1 here, you can take its absolute value. So it becomes the absolute value of negative 1 times the absolute value of x, so we are using the rule previously learned, divided by the absolute value of 3, which is just positive 3. Absolute value of negative 1 is 1, though. So that leaves only the absolute value of x divided by positive 3. In front of this x, you can imagine it is a positive 1, but it doesn't change anything. So you just have negative, so you just have absolute value of x over 3. Thank you so much for watching thus far. Please be sure to finish your super close. And if you have difficulties with math, remember it's a human science, so you just have to persist. Just practice a lot and eventually it will be all begin to snap together, right? But you do have to practice. Okay, now we have this famous one called the triangle inequality. It says absolute value of A plus B is less than or equal to the absolute value of A plus the absolute value of B. Let's work this. So imagine we have 2 plus 3, as if I were doing the left side. So it's going to give you here the absolute value of 5, which is just 5. But now let's do it independently following the right side. You're going to do first absolute value of 2 plus independently the absolute value of 3. Notice that the 2 and the 3 are getting their own absolute value bars. And that's equal to absolute value of 2, which is 2, absolute value of 3, which is 3, which is then just equal to 5. So in this case, notice that both of them are equal to 5. So the part of the symbol that is relevant is the equal to part on the bottom, right? because 5 is equal to 5. But now let's do negative 3 plus 4 first within parentheses or absolute value bars as if following the left side. We will have the absolute value of three plus, negative 3 plus 4 is positive 1. The absolute value of positive 1 though is positive 1. Now we'll do them independently. Absolute value of negative 3 plus the absolute value of 4. That means you apply the absolute value bars first. That's going to give you 3 plus 4 which is 7. So in this case 1 and 7 are definitely not the same values, they're different. So you would say 1 is not equal to 7, definitely. 
Instead, 1 is less than 7. So in this case, the part of the symbol that is relevant is the less than part right there. You see where I'm tracing? And lastly, what happens when you have expressions to evaluate? So like x minus 4 in absolute value. You got to plug in different values of x and see what happens. So like when x is 1, you would have the absolute value of 1 minus 4. But that's just the absolute value of negative 3, which is then positive 3. If x is, say, 4, then you would have, you plug in the 4. Absolute value of 4 minus 4, which is the absolute value of 0, which is equal to 0. Imagine x is 7. Then you would have absolute value of 7 minus 4, but that's 3 in absolute value, but the absolute value of 3 is positive 3. Thank you for watching this video. Please be sure to subscribe, like, and share, and check out my other videos. I'm Tom.